Dear Cyclists, Now, that's not directed to all cyclists. I want to say thank you to the ones that actually follow the rules. Now, this is directed to those cyclists that are absolutely entitled up the ass. And, you know, just want to say, again, you. Okay, so you might be thinking, okay, so where does this come from? Is she just another Nicole Arbor and just complaining about whatever stuff, uh, just to be popular? No. No, I actually have a reason to complain about stuff, so, yeah. Not another Nicole Arbor, thank you very much. Okay, so here's what happened. I went to Buskerfest with my best friend, and we had fun, and then, at the end, obviously, we had to go home. I was already having just a touch of pain in my left leg, and, you know, I could deal with it. I got off the subway, and... Because my best friend had already gone another route to get home, I was alone. In Toronto, we have buses and we have streetcars. And streetcars are just, you know, an old bus, whatever, basically. And it's nice to know that some people are nice, but we cyclists, I have no words. As soon as I got out of the subway, this person on their bike went by so fast that their tire ran over my left foot. Keep in mind, that's the one that was already in a lot of pain. And you know that part that attaches from the wheel to the rest of the bike? Yeah, that hit my knee. I couldn't even identify this person because they had a mask that covered their face to keep the wind out and I guess the bugs out of their mouth. But this doesn't stop there. Oh no, it doesn't. I kept going. They ran over my foot. No care in the world. Just kept going. Didn't even say sorry. You know what he did say though? Get out of the way. Now keep in mind, you know, especially if you live in Toronto, you know downtown, everywhere, bikes are supposed to be on the road. I was downtown, so this is like an actual must. And on the sidewalk, and this guy was riding on the sidewalk. Not walking his bike, riding it. At a very fast speed. Today is not the first time I've had problems with cyclists. <laughs> By where I live, there's a nice path. Actually, all along Toronto, there's a really long path. In Toronto, there is a street called Lakeshore. Now, along Lakeshore, it goes into Scarborough, it goes into, like, the downtown area, kind of. It goes to, like, Etobicoke, it goes to Mississauga, and it's just a long stretch of area that is close to the water. And so, there is a path along there, and bikes are allowed to go, at least in the Toronto part, uh, from what I know. So, every time I'm on there, there is some cyclist, even though I am out of the way and my dog is out of the way because, you know, you know, I train him properly and he actually listens. There's always some cyclist that comes around and says, move your dog and some vulgar obscenity. Now, this has happened in a couple times and more like a few, more like a dozen, but, you know, I don't like to let it get to me. See, my issue here is not that they're riding on the path, is that they think they're entitled to own the entire path when initially it was a pedestrian only path. But the cyclist decided to go and, you know, without telling anybody else, and complain to the city and just said, you know what, we want to cycle here, so yeah. So, and then they got, you know, the ability to cycle on that path and now it's a shared path keep in mind i just said it's a shared path so to those of you who are cyclists that feel you're entitled to own the entire path well yeah you can shove a big one now i have cyclists yelling at me by the dog park there's a certain area where you're allowed to let your dog off leash and that's what i do when that area starts i let him off leash 
but I still have cyclists saying, oh, put your dog on a leash. <laughs> really? Really? Says the person who's got his kids running around everywhere, tiny children, mind you, and practically jumping off the cliff and, you know, Lakeshore, that area, no, it's not safe for children. It's not safe to jump in the water off a freaking cliff. So how about you stop telling me to put my dog on a leash when he is allowed by law to be off leash and he's not hurting anyone because he's actually paying attention to where he's going and he listens to me. Actually teach your kids where they're allowed to go and where they're not and where it is safe and where it is not because, you know, the only way if you don't tell them is them finding out from their own experience and, you know, I'm pretty sure you don't want them having broken bones or worse. These stories are great, aren't they? I take my dog on walks and, you know, when dogs go on walks, they do their business and you have to buy special bags for those. So as I was getting those bags, this cyclist decides to go pick up your dog ish. And you know, I'm not gonna say the actual word because there's no need for swearing. I have a recommendation. How about you feel all the pain I'm feeling in my body? And while you're already doing the thing, that you're supposed to do, have me yell at you, basically in your ear, to pick it up, to do the exact same thing, when you're, everything in your body is already hurting. Let's try that, let's switch roles for a day. No, you don't, you don't, do you? <laughs> yeah, I thought so. Here's another story. Let's just say a person is walking their dog. Their dog is behaving, is on one side of a very wide path, along with the owner. And there is nobody else on the path. Then a cyclist comes close. And the dog just looks back, even though there is plenty of space in this wide path. The dog is only taking up this much in this much of space. So the cyclist decides from here that they are going to go here and then complain that the dog is in the way, almost running over the dog and actually you know, probably fatally injuring the dog in the process, but the owner is smart enough to grab the dog out of the way. Now the cyclist not so smart. They try things, but, you know, they're not so smart. Now, like I said, I have nothing against the cyclists who actually follow the rules and don't act entitled to own every piece of road that they are allowed to use by law and then some. So, you guys are fine. You're fine because you follow the rules. You follow the law and you respect others. But to those of you that did the complete opposite, oh my, I really have no words. You know, I wouldn't wish anything bad on anyone because I'm not that type of person. I'd like to slap you in the face, but you know, that's not recommended by the law. I've had fights almost run into me, even though they had so much space to go around. Is my hair not red enough for you? Is it not enough of a, you know, a red flag to say, oh, maybe I shouldn't just drive my bike right into this person. I've probably survived this long just because I was sharp enough to get my dog out of the way, get myself out of the way and just not say anything because who knows if a person is that much of a dick that they have a shiv with them you just never know anymore the most innocent looking person can you know just stab you out of nowhere it's messed up cyclist come on really why are you acting like an entitled piece of ish you're wearing spandex for god's sakes and I'm pretty sure you're not wearing briefs under those spandex, if you are wearing anything at all. 
you're probably wearing a thong or something to absorb that butt juice from biking for so long. Yeah, I'm talking about guys too. Don't try to pretend like you avoid wearing thongs because I know it absorbs your butt sweat. Listen, why are you trying to act like a dictator? Trying to take every piece of land for yourself? Yo, no. Okay, cyclists. The lesson for today, the word of the day, I'll teach you. Share. Share. Okay, you got it? Okay. So this word, share, it means that not everything is yours. You share with someone else. This is an act of respect and common courtesy. If you don't share the road, when you are cycling on a road that is a shared path with pedestrians, that means you're acting like an entitled piece of ish. You know what that also means? That means you need a big slap in the face. Seriously, I'm pretty sure my hair is red enough for people to notice it from far. Maybe people just see my hair and it's red and see it as a target. That's a possibility. Either way, those people are dicks. If only we could live in utopia. If only. God, if only. We could live in a society where people weren't so damn greedy. Where people didn't try to steal everything from everyone. Where people were actually helping each other. Where people were actually nice to each other. Where people shared. Where people didn't act entitled. It's because of whatever reason, that would be a nice society. Pretty sure Trump would not exist in that society though. You know, cause Trump racist and that society, racism wouldn't even exist. You know he feels so entitled because he's orange, but you know, as regular people, we know what's what. He probably wears spandex and rides a bike too. Yeah, he's probably a cyclist. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's the reason why he feels so entitled, because he's he's just a jackass. 90% of the cyclists I've met in my lifetime, I'm only 23. 90% have been all horrible experiences. The other 10%? children, mostly. Yeah. It's sad when children are nicer than adults. Yeah. <laughs> These parents trying to teach their kids not to be bullies. They need to learn a lesson themselves, okay? Pretty sure my hair is red enough. You can see me. You can see my hair. Pretty sure my hair is red enough. You can see me. You can see my hair. I ain't no skinny stick figure. <laughs> I got some handles, okay? I've got some extra. I'm pretty sure. You can't miss me. That's funny. Fat vegan. At least I don't put heavily processed things in my body. But that's another story. Now, if you like that, please come back for more. Like, subscribe, and be sure to tell your friends. I swear it's not a chore. Love you guys. Bye. Oh, and by the way, love you cyclists that actually follow the rules. Gotta say that again. Don't love the cyclists that don't follow the rules. Glad we got that cleared up.